So now you see we have you know a different um, navigations here. We have our buttons that'll navigate us through the different screens. I also have a drop down that comes out, and we can change our screens that way. Hey everyone, this is Andrew Hess, and I am a government Power Apps developer. So today, what I wanted to do was go over how to create a nav component. I just want to be really quick, really fast, and show you how I get this done rather quickly. So what we're going to do is on the left side, we're going to go to components, and we're going to create a new component. Now you can see it's giving us a lot of space here. I actually want the height to be maybe around 120, and the width we'll say at 1200. This is just kind of me guessing what to put the component as, because we're going to make a nav toolbar across the top. And I'm going to rename my component. I always recommend renaming your component. Um, you may not need to rename everything in your power, but renaming your component is huge. So I'm just going to call it comp nav for navigation. And I'm going to change the color of it maybe to like this icy white. It is cold outside right now, so kind of like this icy blue here. Uh, we'll go with that icy blue. And I'm going to insert some buttons. So this will be the home button. And if we take a look at the power app, if we go back to my screens, I have four screens just to show the different screens. I, I color coded them and named them, named them. I have home, patients, doctors, and offices. So I'm gonna create that across here. So I have one button home, and then just so you know, you don't have to do buttons. You know, you can do, um, how about a toggle? We can do a toggle for navigation if we really wanted to. Uh, for the text, we'll change it to doctors. And the false text will be doctors also. And we'll just make that a little bit bigger. And we can have another button in here. Doctors, patients. And just to show that you can do another type, you know, maybe you want an icon. And normally what I do for the trick for icons is I just put an icon in here. And I just pick anything. And then on the right side, I choose what I want or I search for offices. Uh, that's just normally how I do it. I, I change the icon after so I don't have to look through it in the insert. All right, so we have four types of controls here. We have home, doctors, patients, and offices. Now in our component, what we want to do is create custom properties. And the first one is going to be home. And you can look through all this if you want to look at you know input, outputs. But for this demonstration, we're just going to do screen. And think of this like a, um, like a variable. So we're going to put in a variable screen on our Power App. So we'll just say of data type screen and we're going to create four of those so we have home doctors of type screen another property patients offices of type screen so we have four custom properties now Home, doctors, patients, and offices. So on our first button here, home, we're gonna to go to the on select property. And this is where I was saying rename your component. So you would just say um, navigate, because that's what we wanna do on select, right? We wanna navigate comp nav dot home on a fade. So just think of comp nav dot home. So we're, we're saying the component name, then we're calling the custom property and we're putting that in our navigate on the on select. And just think of, you know, comp home, comp nav dot home like a, like a variable. So on change here, we can do the same thing. Navigate comp nav dot doctors on a fade. And I'll just copy paste this down on patients on select. We can do patients. And then on our icon, we can do offices. 
So we thought of that like a, a variable. So now on the screen, on the home screen, we can insert a custom property, comp nav, can make it the full width. And we could probably adjust this, you know, to be perfect if we wanted to. But right now it's not going to work, right? We haven't um, told the variable what goes in there. So when we hover over the, the navigation component, we can see here, here's our custom properties. And it's kind of guessing which screen we want to go to. So for, for doctors, we just want to type in doctors because that's the name of the screen. So let me, let me rename these real quick just so we understand. So this is screen doctors, screen patients, and screen offices. Just so you can see the difference in those variables. So on home, we can see it already renamed it to screen doctors. Patients is gonna be screen patients. And offices is gonna be screen offices. So now we could just, you know, click on here and it'll take us to the next screen. Now all we have to do is take this component, copy it and paste it across all of our screens and it should work let me double check so the, it all seems correct except for the home seems off we need to make sure this says home on all of our screens so home is home when I configured it you know it said app active screen we actually want that to be home all right so now we have our navigation we can click on doctors, it should change us, patients, offices, and our component, you know, it stays up there. It's rather simple. Uh, maybe the toggle is not the best um, idea, but I just wanted to show how that would work too, how that could work. But now we have created this custom navigation. And now that since you have the basics to it, you can really, you know, create some, some neat things if you wanted to, you know. Let me see if I can do this quickly. So let's see, rectangle. I'm going to pull on a rectangle. I want it to be that um, icy color. I'm going to reorder it, send to the back. I want it to be that icy blue. All right, so it's that icy blue. And I want it to come down. I want the Y to be negative 100. Nope, how about... 100 How about we make it 100 there so it like pops out let's say we have another button I'm just gonna try and do this rather quickly we want it to also be 120 maybe uh, 150 145 seems perfect. Uh, this one will say home. And of course, you can build this out yourself. I'm going to take the button and the rectangle and I'm going to group them. So what I'm going to do on my show drop, I'm going to say set variable show drop or ve exclamation variable show drop. And on my group, I'm going to say the visibility is variable show drop. The button three, which is hidden right now, this is now going to be comp nav or navigate comp nav dot home on a fade. Then what I need to do, so the component allows me to have space, I'll increase the height to 200. Um, the fill will be clear. We'll have another rectangle here. Rectangle, it'll be here. It will send it to the back. We can see that I need this to be all the way over. But we can see, now this opens up. 
and we could have a nav come down on the side. So we could have all of our buttons alongside there. We just need to make sure we fill in that space here. So the size is 1366 on my width. I can come in here and do uh, the component 1366. Add this to 1366. So now when we go back to my screen, it fits perfectly. We now have a drop down. We could go in and, and, and keep adding, you know, as long as I can do this rather quickly, you know, 400. We can have this rectangle be a lot larger, but I don't want the button to be larger too. So we could have home, doctors, patients, offices. The visibility is that var show drop. Um, we have our buttons here. This will be doctors, patients, and offices. So when we go back to our screen, you know, we can show the drop, have these come down. Obviously we want to, as we switch the screen, you know, you want that to disappear. So I do think this is another idea. And maybe when you switch the screens, you want to um, reset that variable. So one thing I did notice as I was building this out, of course, I, as I build things out, I start noticing more and more. We could uh, go back to our component, insert a timer. Since we can't really affect it, I believe this may be a way around. We could just set a timer. So now you see we have, you know, a different um, navigations here. We have our buttons that will navigate us through the different screens. I also have a drop down that comes out and we can change our screens that way. You know, maybe you want your navigation to look like that. But I, I think this was a really quick tutorial. Obviously, this is just some basic ideas. You can create your own. Um, the reason I used a, a timer part was because, of the you know, the variable, it doesn't really come through a component well. So I'm just resetting that uh, variable to false uh, when the timer ends on like half a second. So as I change, I have my full complete uh, toolbar. I hope you guys enjoy this. Please like and subscribe. My name is Andrew Hess. Uh, I can't wait for next year. Uh, there's so many more things coming out for Power Apps. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.